when we talk about ethnicity and who are you and what you identify as, as Baha'is, we identify as like world citizens or human mm. beings. In terms of subscribing to identity politics where it causes division, we shy away from that. Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of The Conversation Capital with me, Ursula Mariani, your host, and the voice of reason. Hey, girl. Hey, hey. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. How's Asa doing? Asa's is good. She's growing. She's growing. Oh, I love <laughs> it. She's such a big girl. Yeah. Every time I'm just like, well, wow, wow, we go. <laughs> Give her you mic'd up today. No, I'm not. You're not mic'd up. Given this, <laughs> he's not mic'd up, so he's not joining the conversation, which is fine because the guest that we have today, I've been waiting for since, like, I think every month, every recording session, I'm like, are you in the country? Are you in the country? Are you in the counting? <laughs> are you available? Where are you? And yes. it's been, it's such an honor to have you. Vafa, hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I like? am awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for finally having me. You know, yes. can I tell you the cool thing about Vafa? Every time I would message him and then I remember I'd be like, I'm giving up because I'm just so annoyed that he's never around. Yeah. And then he'd be like, I want to come. I mm. want to come. <laughs> See, these are, these, are, these are too many relationship experiences. You just keep them <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah. Careful <laughs> what to say. Yeah, but I still love you. But yeah. I still want this yes, to work. I still I can't, want this to work. Not That's right now, but I still want this to work. Yeah, yeah Mama yes. did that to me for a He kept me there. I'm the girl that he just kept there at bay. And now finally, you see, happy ending. So. You know? Yes, finally. <laughs> so you got to trust that man, guys. You got you to gotta, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> He will come back to you. <laughs> but for, for, those of, the, for the people that don't know you, and I think everybody knows you, but for the people that don't know you, and I know, and I know you've touched on it in other podcasts, but um, I think it's interesting, this Persian guy who speaks to Zulu. This what guy? Oh, yeah. Inge? My bad. You said the what guy? Am I wrong? I did. <laughs> Maybe let's start again. Omo ing. Yes. Omo zwan. Omo guy. Mafi king. Mafi king. Yes. Matsana vada mafi king. No, well, Line this is... Line number this one. Is, uh, this is con- <laughs> it's a controversial thing it's it it depends which uh which sort of tribe so yes i mean there's 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 a whole contestation about what what is the proper pronunciation but it's just like it's uh different dialects mm. which do actually even exist in mafi so it's like saying fela or hela okay you could say my gang mafi gang um, okay so i subscribe to that so you're mixed race indian arab Hey, Mutuana full, 100%. Outlay. <laughs> Outlay. 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 Mutuana wa Vafa. Yes. Vafa. Oh, so it's the name that makes Mutuan. <laughs> In which case, Kibuikanyo, which is my second name. No, man. Oh, but how far do you want to go? I want to Make go. it racial. I Make it racial. <laughs> say it. Say it. Say it. I can't wait for it now. We're young. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Stressing me on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell me your heritage a little bit? What is it? Okay, so I identify as Tswana because I was socialized Tswana. Okay. Mm. Uh, so everything about um, my, oh, let's talk about like my formative years. So a lot about that was very much Tswana. Uh, my parents are uh, from, long story short, from Iran. So they're of Persian descent. Mm. So you would say maybe DNA-wise, I'm Persian. Okay. Uh, but from a very young age, they didn't attach us to that. So when when we were growing up, we myself and my two brothers were born and brought up in South Africa. And a lot of our uh, childhood years were in Mafikeng. And during that time, they were literally like, go outside, go and find your people outside. Not here. Like... Mm. There's nothing that you're attached to. That's really cool. Uh, wow. So Can you speak? Ish, I can say Farsi. Can you speak Farsi? Yes, and that is that's so. It's conversational. Um, that's amazing. But mm. it's it was only taught to us by our parents, so we don't know how to read and write. Uh, okay. Then okay. we don't know how to hit on girls. <laughs> wow. We don't know how to swear. So all of the PG thirteen sort of things, yeah. we don't know. Ah, okay, okay. And then, you know, you journey through Mafi Gang, you finally make it to the City of Lights, darling. Am I right? Which City of Lights? Johannesburg. I can't I think they should change. With all the load shedding here, it can't be Mabwene anymore. It can't be. Honestly, we're there. We are there. It can't be Johannesburg. There's even load shedding. I think the place that gets load shedded the most, Kim Mabwene. So... 
I agree with this name, possibly. <laughs> but it's like Josie Malone Shedding. I don't know. <laughs> I've, 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 Mafifi, the job of Mafifi. Onto something. <laughs> onto something. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, this is joint IP on this idea, no? <laughs> We have you know developed what? it here. I'll My presence here has, has You know, has ignited me. something in me. I'll be honest, Mafa, one of the you know major reasons that I'd gotten you in was just, I'm very inspired by your journey because you're a friend of my cousin's. And she says to me one day, hey, go follow uh, my friend, whatever, whatever. And he's going to, be, he's becoming a comedian. And How long ago was this? Engineer. This was right at the beginning. No, it was, yeah, you had like maybe Yo. 100 followers that time. And then I'm like, ah, okay, another one trying to break out of the norm. But then, you know, every time I see you, you're just growing and escalating. Mm. And now you're selling out spaces. Your shout out to you because it must have been really painful. <laughs> to be one of I, those you know papa's got this perception that i was hating on him i never hated him. no not that but like i'm i even look back to what i started posting oh, oh is that what oh. you and mean and i'm like oh. I, I wouldn't have stuck around me <laughs> no, no, no 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 i think i was interested in the I would journey have joined now i would have right now it's hot but then no, when, i'm when like when people no, join no, no. now and they share your video i'm like i live to phoenix <laughs> 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 We've seen him at his worst. The new so, yeah, but like I said, I was really inspired because like when I see it's like, yo, you know. Shame if you're inspired song. by that. Hey. No, no, no. Your, inspired your, like by your level just of inspiration the, is... No, no, no. The, the diligence of it, you know, the growing of it. Like I said, sometimes, you know, you don't always see. I think I was off Instagram for like a year, so I wouldn't see you all the time. But uh -huh. then when I, the next time I see you, it's like, hey, damn. Something else. He's something actually doing... New. Yeah, then mm. the next thing he's on this podcast. And I'm like, wow, this guy's actually doing some great work, you know. So it was really inspiring to me. And your Misaki song fit your life. So yes. I can want to get out there, John. <laughs> Go on, <dear. laughs> So, yeah, you know, if you could just walk us through that, you know. Um, I think, I don't know if you've touched on this other podcast, but if you'd like to. I did, but very briefly, I think, um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was working as an engineer so for a good couple of years. And then I wasn't so happy with, like, the work environment. And I want to change, any sort of change. And then I must admit, at the beginning, I didn't want to. I never knew anything about comedy. I didn't want to become a comedian. Wow! And so, how did you choose comedy? Such a it, vulnerable thing. Because it was literally, um, it was literally the thing with the lowest barriers to entry. It's like you don't need a CV, <laughs> you don't need work experience, you don't need nothing. All you need to do is just change your bio and write the comedian. <laughs> you see, every like <laughs> people with five followers, content creator, comedian. Okay. You don't like there's no nobody's nobody's actually regulating the stuff. Mm, absolutely, yeah. SARS doesn't come and say that, but can you can prove? you see only five people mm. laughed. Yes. So <laughs> therefore you do not qualify. You failed the exam. <laughs> they are laughing, like but that. they are silent. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's the same. So so the barriers to entry was were small. I just I think mm. wanted something to distract myself. I did it and I think I did mention this like I think in another podcast or an interview that um literally only two or three yeah two or three years in mm. to actually doing it and i'd managed to convince everybody else that this is my passion and dream <laughs> but it was a lie mm. i was a liar mm. i'm coming clean now yeah. guys yeah. um and and then i eventually believed the lie mm. and then i was like no i actually do so th something clicked where <clears throat> i actually fell in love with it but the beginning stages when no, I, it that, was, I just wanted something else, anything but my normal. It's so interesting to me who you went for something that requires you to like stand in front of people and, and like hold a show. Yeah, talk about something that doesn't have Like you went from not doing comedy to doing comedy because of like a logical reason, the barrier mm -hmm. to entry. It needed, it, it needed to be something drastic enough that it would be believable. <laughs> 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 you know, people will be like, no, of course it's his passion. Can you tell me so about your family, though? How did they take that? Uh, at first, oh, what am I saying at first? I think eternally. They, I think they're not, they, okay. I think it's, and I'm, I'm, I'm having a better appreciation of that right now, mm -hmm. is that I understand what generation they're from and what, what sort oh, of environment they this. needed to yeah. deal with. Mm -hmm. So coming into this country as immigrant parents, the top of the priority is survival. Mm -hmm. So when they came here, um, like oh, my do my 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 sorry, my dad's um, my dad's philosophy is that you know you need to get a job that is useful that mm -hmm. people are going to pay for, and what do you go for? Either like an engineer or a doctor, because 
like in times of peace, you'll always have a job. People need to build houses. People are getting sick, old age. And also in times of war, war and turmoil, engineers are required to build stuff. And then doctors are like helping people yes. who are injured from the... So you're always useful. And then there's other fringe careers like podcasting. That when a war is happening, who needs to podcast? No. Mm. Frontline, when are you getting a rifle? <laughs> that is what's happening. So... So it's like, um, he was like, what's useful? What, what do people always need? You need to look at. So it was from a, not from like, what do you enjoy doing yes, and what do you want to do? Practicality. Will it get you a job? Yeah. Will it get you stability? So that was, that was, the, so I don't think it was ever in their plans or ambitions or dreams or even possibilities mm. to be a comedian or an entertainer or a musician or anything in the arts at all, I think. Mm. Primarily was like, how can we put pizza on the table? Mm. Um, so tell me uh, then how do you convince them what happens no so okay well first of all I understand that because of the life that they had to live that has afforded me some privilege mm. to have more options mm. so they super value, valued education so they made sure we did well at school uh, went to university did well over there they would uh, they would encourage us give us positive affirmations and everything to make sure that we so they were the perfect parents in that space to get us mm -hmm. through the education mm -hmm. so we did that we got all of that um, so yes uh, engineering and then even pursued my masters and then both of my brothers in the same space so they were huge on that and then with that platform it's now of afforded me opportunities and things yeah. like now I can because of the schools that I went to or universities that I went to and the people that they put me mm. like they didn't I don't know if it was intentional or not but they managed to put me in spaces where like at UCT you're rubbing off shoulders of people who have started entrepreneurial mm. endeavors mm. and then all of a sudden now your dreams are wider you're like mm. oh I can do this and I can do that and I can do that mm. so even now with the comedy when when I look at it, I view it. Uh, it's more an entrepreneurial endeavor than it is really. I'm having fun in the arts, mm. so it's not it's not reckless. You're just like yes. okay, um, you. I view myself as like a product eventually that I'm trying to sell to people. Mm. Yes, do people find it funny in this space or in this space? Um, how do we monetize this? How do, because now I need to live five years from now or mm. ten years from now. Mm. Other than that, that, I should go and become an engineer or go and find an engineering job. So it's not uh, it's not purely like oh I found passion and I, it's mm. it is sort of backed by sense but there is also a, a, a huge part of it that is like yeah. uh, a purpose driven endeavor okay. and and I think that so even that that purpose was there with the engineering mm. but in this in the workspaces I was in I wasn't able to exercise that so I've got more autonomy yes. I would find in my entertainment. Uh career that I didn't have then because we have to work for bus. Vafa, I do want to move on to the bracelets that you're wearing around East Africa, but I've got one more question around this. And just, you know, somebody listening at home, like, damn, I'm a doctor and I'm not happy. And how <coughs> did this guy do this? Start I getting happy actually, because we need doctors. I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to be, I don't know, a, an art student or whatever have you. And just speaking to like, speak directly to the fears. There must have been a fear. And how did you navigate that space? So, uh, you know, it's, it's, also, it's also a tough space to advise anybody on their career or even livelihood. Yeah. And I think, well, I'm, I'm most, uh, most familiar with the South African context because of the socioeconomic uh, situation in the country. People, like there's black tax, there's like whole sorts of other like problems that come about in life and responsibilities that one needs to take care of with an immediate family, extended family, friends, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. So to advise somebody on career, which is very closely affected to livelihood, mm. there's more at stake over there. So a lot of people will come up to me and I'm like, I, so what I can, um, I think from my, okay, my personal experience or perspective, I'm, I'm quite conservative actually. When it, so in terms of my, my risk appetite, Mm. generally is quite conservative. It may appear as very risk-friendly to the outside world, mm -hmm. but I've calculated it 10 times in my head already. Mm. That's just my personality. Mm. And that's probably very, like, probably informed by my, my parents and what they brought us up to be because they, it, 
that immigrant mentality of we need to survive. Mm. So they were like, you can live a good life, but also make sure that there is a safety net mm. that in case X or Y and Z happens. So in that sense, <clears throat> when, when I moved to comedy, it was relatively risk-free, relatively. Mm. So it was... It, in my head, I was I had contingencies that I had worked as an engineer. I had money saved up. Mm. So I was like, okay, if I want to give this comedy run for two or three years, mm. then um, I've, got two or three years. I've got savings. For two or three years, yeah. What can I leverage? Mm. Um, how am I going to get money in the interim? Uh, at the time when I did do the switch, I enrolled for my master's at UCT mm -hmm. and then I got a scholarship for that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, that's going to take me through for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So so a couple of those things was were, were calculated mm -hmm. um, and then that together with like the passion and drive and the purpose to mm -hmm. want to get it across. I hear you. I mean, as you're explaining that, I remember that I saw a <laughs> meme and I chuckled a little bit, but I was mostly heartbroken. It says, um, So, you know, like basically this interview saying girl, like wherever she is, she's sitting in the middle of Wattville or whatever. Wusi mm -hmm. is from Wattville apparently, so no shade on Wattville. <laughs> it, you know, but like then just, you know, dreaming big and saying, hey, I want to go do drama or, you know, and I want to be the next Lupita. And then the, the caption then says, uh, meaning that they're living off grant though in her mm -hmm. home. You know, it, it was just a, a meme. It wasn't like, specific, but it spoke to how many people have this, you know, like you can't speak to, hey, go follow your dream to everyone because sometimes there are practicalities that other people and kids and whatever need to go look at. Yeah, Oof. this is like, it's so layered this thing because mm -hmm. I think that also um, what, what my parents afforded us the most, I think, was like a, um, a freedom of, of thought and freedom mm -hmm. of mind to believe that like possibilities are there. Like, mm -hmm. So as, as far as I can remember, I think I was like five, six, and my dad, I used to tag along with my dad. He's, a, he's an engineer, so a civil engineer and structural engineer. And all as well. three of his sons became engineers. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was meant to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we, uh, I, would, I would tag along to his construction sites. And at a very young age, he would be like, oh, yeah, you're, you're an engineer. You're already an engineer. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was like never an option. Even, even going through school, the, the, the thought uh, was that um, my parents used to tell us that you, or not, not tell us or make us believe almost that mm -hmm. you, you're already an engineer. You just need to sit in this school for 12 years and then after that you're going to go to another institution you're going to chill there for four years you just you yeah. just need to attend just, be. just wake up in the because morning and go an engineer. then they will give it to you when you're when you're done you just need to serve your time it was yeah. like prison that's yeah. it and after prison you're going to get all of these things so so there was never a doubt yeah. um Ooh. there was never a doubt even even that. if we even if i failed a test it was like and a, i don't think i ever failed time. any subject or course but if I failed the test and I got, and I think I remember this one geology or something in um, university, I had 33% or something going into the final exam. Mm. That was my DP or whatever. <laughs> the odds were completely against me, but I looked at it and I was like, it's impossible for mm. me to fail this. It's actually impossible. Because I'm actually already an engineer. I'm already an engineer. Wow. So they must have made a mistake. Oh, I love it. But that. I'm, oh. so <clears throat> that belief mm. went right through. And, uh, so the, 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 there is that there is that side of it that is like very psychological, mm -hmm. yeah. but then there's a there's also I think a logic aspect of it that okay I believe and I but also I need to somehow put in the work to make this happen. Mm -hmm. What is it actually going to take to pass this exam? Mm -hmm. I need to study, so it's not a reckless faith. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know sometimes I do I know I'm digressing and, and okay. changing in different spaces now. I hope. I hope I'm following. Uh, we are on. conversing here. It's the conversation yeah. capital. So, yeah. <laughs> capital. Capital. Mm. <laughs> and then, uh, so, <clears throat> there's what, what is, maybe because of my, my aptitude, uh, that there's a great sense of logic that always follows my passion and things that I want to do. Mm. So, um, I think a rhetoric that is often spread out not 
primarily you will see it in a lot of like in a in a religious sense that sometimes can be a little bit toxic for people that you, and people end up staying in in a certain situation just because they're like no we we believe we have faith ne? and it's it's almost like you you um, you surrender everything to that faith but it's like okay you have faith in god you you believe in this you believe in in the in the abnormal something that is unachievable but also you put work behind it to get mm. to get closer there you mm. you know you so it's not <clears throat> in in that sense it's it's that faith is empowering mm. because you have the faith and then you're motivated to work and walk towards mm. whatever you have faith in mm. and not a disempowering faith if i could call it that mm. where you just have faith and then we'll do learn you like mm. that engineering degree is coming mm. yeah like that mm. so um and i would say in in that sense uh i think in a south african sense highly privileged with my upbringing mm. in terms of growing up in uh in 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 a quote unquote safe home both parents were there uh if they had financial problems we never knew about it um no no verbal abuse no physical abuse so it was it was a safe environment which allowed us to be kids and dream and have all of the and then it was also empowering and um uh positive affirmations and mm. making sure that we have things like i mean i never filled out a, an application form for university my mm. mom was a, she might as well have gone <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she did all of our applications for us so mm. yeah i mean they helped us in many senses to yeah. to get us there and then mm. eventually cross the line so in that sense we are very privileged to mm. to be free of mm. like our thought and the things yes. that we wanted yeah. to do and the yeah. possibilities the in our life yeah. and then also Yeah. equipped mm. to actually go out and, and achieve those things you speak so, a lot of faith 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 are you just cyber one sentence are you religious yes oh is it so i'm a bahai the bahai faith ah. so that's primarily reason why my parents actually ended up here okay. in the country and um Ooh. and it's 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 been it it is something that is probably the single most influential thing uh or influence in in my life and the person I am. So um very much part of the Bahai faith central theme of the Bahai faith is unity. Mm. So uh the equality of all ethnic races, uh, colors, mm. genders, so equality of men and women as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So um there's a very uniting theme to it and then that again when we talk about ethnicity and who are you and what you identify as as bahais we we identify as like world citizens or human beings mm -hmm. yes appreciate differences and nuances and embrace all of that um but in terms of subscribing to identity politics where it causes division we shy away from that mm -hmm. so again that was our parents philosophy when we came here they're like you you don't need to attach to what your aesthetics mm -hmm. are you need to assimilate in your environment over here because eventually again very central to the bahai faith is mm. service to humanity mm. so that is overarching that is what drives me purpose level mm. like why i do my comedy why i got into engineering in the first place so again with my parents they're like if it's who do you want to serve you need to serve mm. the people that are immediately mm. around you how do you do that you become one with the people around you so that informed a lot of my socialization growing mm. up in south africa and that's why you can speak botswana so well you just immerse botswana ah uh, uh, botswana yeah. you mean bo botswana yeah. bozulu that i think is oh, like yeah. a plural is that a thing what do you mean if she was going about to list her, an array of yeah, languages Nigeria. it would have been no no i, I no I'm, i'm learning here no i can, i'm not a tech. i was speaking so to her here botswana hey. bo e botswana hey, okay botswana, is yeah. that the plural of like languages eh hey, obabua bozulu bosuthu mm. botswana bo <laughs> okay 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 yes no english yes. we respect we don't both so that that really <laughs> your outlook or your family's outlook on immersing yourself in their culture mm -hmm. really made you the person you are in that you speak different yes. languages so i think my relationship with languages was uh it has uh, has been more of like of like interest but interest to like assimilate mm. and not communicate mm. because even like uh, so it's 
if you want to communicate something, then you actually don't need to learn the language. There's apps for this these days. Mm. With a type of Google Translate, mm. and you're like, this is what I need. Or Duolingo, there's maybe. Duolingo. Or mm. No, even, but Duolingo, okay, you're learning the languages. But like, if you have a deeper attachment to it, or deeper investment, rather. If your investment is actually to be part of community, mm. then you need to understand nuance. You need to understand mm. what is the cultural reference of this. You need mm. to understand tone. You need to understand... What, what can you say where? Like, I may be wanting to communicate this thing to you, and this is how you say it, but I, I can't tell you this openly in mm. front of people because that's disrespectful. Mm. So how do I... So Even like, how are you <coughs> being plural in, in South African languages? You can't greet... Uh, sorry, that's yes, a cultural thing. Yes. Like, you could know the languages, how are you, but if you understand Rite, the culture... Yeah, you understand the culture, it's how are you guys. Yes. Yes. You actually have to add that, you guys. Mm. You can't just but say... I think that was more for, like, women and split personalities and, like, even if... Excuse me? One. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. So I want to chat to now the whole East African thing. You're here, you're saying Motswana, now Ubizi, Libo can see me any Operation Fat Alice. Or or a Levit, or a Levit, Fat Alice. So what's what's the relationship there? Because I know that you're in, in Kenya, you get I'm actually chuckling because I remember you did some prank where you're acting like a mogul and you were Oh yes, that I was investing in the <laughs> it was country. Hilarious. It was oh it was funny. Oh that's I can't was funny. I actually it was, for me it was completely unreal that the situation um, played along. Well, I don't think you've seen it. Mm -mm, I haven't. Where, um, where I'm in Kenya, and this, so this friend of mine that <laughs> like I've become really close with now. So at the time, I'd probably met him maybe f three or four days before. So he's a content oh. creator over there. Mm. He's a prankster in Kenya. So he's like the biggest prankster in the whole region. So he speaks a, like mostly Swahili, but Swahili English. So he does his pranks mostly in Kenya, mm. but along the region like. They call him the president of the streets. You can't go anywhere. So his name is uh, Big Fish. Mm -hmm. So uh, him and I, uh, so he told me, I'm like, okay, I'm unsure whether I can do these pranks or this. He's like, no, trust me, don't worry. So he gives me very little information. He's like, take this suitcase. So I've got this suitcase, a roller suitcase. And then he's like, follow me, follow my lead. I'll just speak. And then you just speak. You just see what your role is over here. But I'm going to start a conversation. So there's these two people randomly in the CBD on a bench. Like... Mm. Have an plan sort of vibe, you know, mm. but it's a fair like yes. they, they just, mm. I don't know what they're waiting for, mm. you know. Um, <clears throat> he comes, we approach the thing, and so he's like, Mr. Vafa, these are the two people, part of uh, the, <laughs> the committee. <laughs> and uh, these, this is the chairman, and this is the uh, accountant or the finance <laughs> person. Sorry, yeah. But that lady, she, as soon as she saw, she's like, I don't want to be involved with <laughs> you. So we, be f we followed with a camera <laughs> ne, mm. that is recording us. So, now, he's not informing anybody of anything that's happening, mm. but he's also expecting that guy True. to play along, mm. which is insane <laughs> because we have never met this guy, guy in our life. And the guy actually plays along. <laughs> so he tells a guy, tells a guy that like, oh... Um, in Swahili. No, no, no. He's uh, like sort of saying in... He, he speaks in... This is the... So he makes him know that there's money involved. So he's like, Vafa, the money that you have been sending... Uh, we've been using it for boreholes. Is it not so? <laughs> and then the guy starts speaking, and then he starts telling him in Swahili, like, yeah, this is a, like, let's take opportunity, let's take a chance with this guy. Um, <laughs> and so then funny. now this guy starts, like, out of his <laughs> own know? volition, he starts saying, uh, listen, yeah, we've made 25 boreholes, and we've got this. <laughs> but you are not the thing is so funny. Is so but, funny. But, but there's, and, 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 I, and I love that, like, sort of, like, you bring that up in yeah. terms of just even, Getting to know people. So uh, I, I went to East Africa for the mm. first time last year. My first stop was Tanzania, so Dar es Salaam. And then my, so my second trip there, I went to Kenya. And then a third trip, Uganda. Mm. And then subsequently, I think I've been to Kenya about five, five times since August last year. Five, six times since August last year. So that's probably the area I've uh, frequented the most. Mm. And when I got there, <clears throat> now as a tourist, you get given like a, tourist guide hey this is about us we run uh we we've run. got safaris <laughs> you know <laughs> lion king was shot here Hakuna Matata. Mm. Da, 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 da. then okay you get all of that but it takes time to actually know what's going on mm. you know and then i'll i'll go to comedy clubs so i'll be performing my stand-up and there you also get a feel because you say something you get an instant reaction and you're like hmm they didn't like that. Mm. Or they don't get that. Mm. And, they, and how do I relate to them? How do I connect oh, wow. to them? So I, get, I, had to, I got to do that. 
And then sure. I did skits I like where that. now I would do skits. And then you see online how people are reacting to that. So you mm-hmm. get that. But it's also, it's all sort of still there is distance. There's gap. You don't get to get to a real person. You're like, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. Because now if you automatically know I'm a South African, you're going to tell me the best about what's going on. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you give me the highlights of the worst. Mm-hmm. Like you just give me the highlights packet, but you may not even tell me the truth, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, so doing those pranks, mm. he told me, he's like, now you're going to see true Kenyans in yeah, their in natural their habitat. <laughs> Nobody has scripted them. Nobody has informed them. This is you just like interacting. Yeah. So whether it's in corruption or something else or whatever, you get. And, and there I was just like, wow, this is like, it felt like a crazy human experience. Can we tell them a little bit more of that prank or must they go watch it themselves? No, I guess they can go and watch it. But what, what, in what sense? Basically, this guy starts playing along, and then yeah. he realizes that this guy wants to leave with the suitcase of money. So he says, "Listen, I'm so, a, so, so, I t- I'm about to blow cover <laughs> if you don't leave." <laughs> <laughs> So it got sort of hostile because I, <laughs> he was the man. No, the the so so what the information was that I'd already sent money for the projects, but now there I've was got like I don't know two million or something <laughs> in my suitcase, cash. And now, as soon as he heard that, his <laughs> eyes opened and everything. Yeah. Now my friend was convincing him that he'll take the money and they'll meet up later. And mm. he was like, no. He said, listen, okay, but I, sir, know. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> he even, even started admitting to say, like, I'm a big con man. Yes, he did. <laughs> He's like, I'm also a con man. Yeah, he said, I'm me. like, there's a camera rolling. How do you not care about that? You're just like, I am. Oh, wait, he didn't see. Oh, he could see the camera. The camera was live in front oh. of him. So, but I like, get it. They are, they are with a big deal. This man is here for a purpose, so they can't. So, so they, that's what the that's what the thought was. Yes. But there's no fear of this being. This whole time caught. I thought it was like a hidden sort of camera. Mm-hmm. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. I, I maybe I didn't <laughs> take knowledge of the angles. I thought he didn't realize that he was being recorded. No, no, no. no. Ah, I see. I see. Anyway, the question was, yes. what's up with you in East Africa? What's going on there? So, uh, so like my my long term vision. Mm-hmm is that I want to be an international voice mm. that speaks directly, so one of two things, that speaks directly um, to Africans, the whole continent. Mm. So I have a big pan-Africanist vision that these are the, the so Africans are people I want to serve, mm-hmm. my people that I want to serve. Mm. So these are, this is the group of people that I want to speak to primarily. Mm. So, it's, so I want to speak to Africans or I want to speak to the world, but through an African yes. lens. Yes. Oh. So one of those two things, and they can both actually coexist. So half my time speaking directly to Africans, other time speaking to the world, but through an African lens. Yeah. So, so part of that, when, when I look at my trajectory right now, a lot of my, a lot of my livelihood, a lot of my work, mm. um, a lot of my influence is in South Africa. Mm. And... So still about like 70%, 80% of my time and efforts and energy mm. goes into South Africa. So yes. you will see that with my content, yeah. with, my, with my shows, with mm. me being on stage, mm. and, and, and. Mm. Slowly I'm starting to appropriate some of that time mm. onto the continent and then even a little bit more time internationally. So it's yes. like, I don't know if you've ever heard the concept of, it's called the McKinsey um teachers no the mckinsey Mc- no i'm under pressure <laughs> <laughs> but what, the, is it? what is the, it the the mckinsey yeah, why have i forgotten the word it's in english horizons model okay. so mckinsey being the management consultant firm so the horizon model is that if you've got like a long-term horizon so you've got like horizon three of where you want to be in five ten years time mm-hmm. um first what you deal with is like horizon one is where you are right now what is mm-hmm. like 80 90 percent of what you do currently Mm -hmm. yes i want to be an international voice but i'm not touring internationally i'm not doing what say your trevor noahs are doing going to countries around the world but um because most of my things are over here but i eventually want to do that so if i want to do that i don't go now and start booking theaters in sweden Mm -hmm. because nobody knows me this so it doesn't make sense nobody's going to come to my show so what do i do 80 percent of my time i spend over here in Mm -hmm. south africa um 70% 70% of my time I spend in South Africa, 10% of my time I spend internationally. So I'll go and visit Sweden and the States and mm-hmm. may do a couple of shows over there, mm-hmm. maybe jump onto other people's shows, connect networks mm-hmm. and everything. 20% of the time is that you do in the bridging one. So for me, I look at it as South Africa, Africa, the world. Yes. So. of my time is spent on the continent where that is now my bridging space. Mm, So 
as I will progress, maybe in five, six, seven years time, maybe I'll be spending 80%, 90% of my efforts equitably on the continent. Mm. That is what I'm working towards. Yes. But to get to that point, I now I just invest a little bit over there because I still need to make a livelihood. I still need to make a name here in the country and establish yeah. myself. And then, so it's just over the years, you sort of appropriated to that space. I'm finding so, you such an interesting person. I didn't know this much about you, I must be honest. Uh, because you're Persian, decent, <laughs> but uh, parents were coming from Iran. And from Iran, you come into this Mahiging, Mafiging space and you socialized as Motswana. Now, dab a little bit across the country, you're like Cape Town, wherever have you, and you're doing great comedy. You're moving over to Africa. You're now, you know, with these um, East Africa, you're moving over to Africa. We'll get in trouble for things like that. <laughs> but you've got these East African. Africa. Yeah. <laughs> We've already had a lot of trouble <laughs> with things like that. So you've got these East African um, bands on your wrist, and now you're speaking of going even more global through an African lens. And I'm seeing how. Uh, you're not Next joking. Next Nigeria, right? Yeah, you're not joking when you say Kimutwana or you know that you identify as African. Mm. And so, if we can, you know, we're about to close off. But if we could talk about like the we're whole about idea to close around. off. Uh, we're not. We are here for you, and as long yeah. as you want to be. Yeah. You know, this is a three-hour podcast. Listen, yeah? <laughs> if it's for Mafa, it will be three hours. Oh, right? I'm gonna part two. Maybe I can. Call. Yeah, honestly, mm. so fine. You know, now we're just looking at the identity aspect of it. And if you could just touch on that, because I feel like sometimes we become so tied to an identity. And I, I liked what you said with global citizen. I love that. I really love that term. And honestly, before Global Citizen Festival, I didn't know mm, that such a term exists. But when I came across it, I was like, this is really cool. Because I find that we become so, like, chained to where we come from. And those things sort of make up our identity and who we are. And quote, unquote, I always feel like it's one of the reasons, like, um, some people have like huge identity crisis issues at a mixed race because they don't know like where to anchor and tie themselves. And I'm just looking at you like, hey man, now I'm wearing a Ugandan bracelet or a Kenyan, like, you know, Batki Motswana and, you know, Persian descent. And it's, it's amazing. And so um, if you could just, you know, highlight on that, how does one become a global citizen? Um, what's your thinking around that? Yeah. Whew. Is it like, yeah. So I, this conversation can go into different spaces. Mm -hmm. When I, when I, when I look at, or, I just want to start off by saying some when I when I started going to East Africa, yeah, and um, I before I even left the country to go into comedy there, mm. I'd maybe been I hadn't actually been much around the continent to visit for holiday or whatever purpose. Mm. So this was my first experience actually knowing more mm. about mm. people mm. across the continent. Mm. So I went in there, and my initial thought before I left was that I've got this idea in my head that. Um, like creating Ubuntu yeah. or seeking Ubuntu. Now, Ubuntu with, with its derivatives from Bantu and, and Bantu people and Bantu being the largest, um, the largest spread uh, geographically of a language group probably in the world. I stand corrected. I don't know how big mm. the land space is in yeah. China or wherever else. Yeah. But... <clears throat> along Africa, everywhere from Nigeria, east, uh, Nigeria, below the equator, all the way east to Kenya, and then right down to South Africa, with the exception of the Khoisan. That is a separate language group. But Even every further, I think, because it, it goes from Ghana, isn't it? And Ghana's a bit... More so maybe, yes, Ghana, Nigeria, that's yeah. where, that's where it, it... So there's, yeah. there's, there's not much context to where, where did it start yes, and how yeah, did it migrate. Yeah. But the thought is that it started off there at the nucleus over there. Yeah. Over there, then, then, then they've got the, um, I think I stand corrected, the Niger, Congo yeah. language groups and that goes on. And uh -huh. then, so from, from there, spread east and then all the way there. So you, Swahili is a big um, yeah. language over there. And then in South Sudan, you also have a couple of Bantu languages and people that are Bantu people. And then you come right down to the tip of Africa, South Africa. And then the only anomaly, again, is the, the Khoisan people, that they're a, diff a completely separate language group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So completely separate people. So a lot, this large mass of people have so much in common. And that you can see in language. We share, uh, like, you, you listen to Swahili, and then probably language... What, what is speaking uh, Malawi? Chichewa. 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 So Chichewa, there will be there will be uh, parts of the language are very similar, and then you mm. listen to Zulu and Tswana and whatever. So you may not. Some of them are mutually comprehensible, and some are not. 
But there's a lot of commonalities in that. There's a lot of commonalities in food. Mm. So there's a lot of things that keep us. So my initial thought of when I wanted to speak to Africa is like, mm. let's unite us on mm. the similarities. Mm. And that was that was my initial thought. And then now speaking to a very good friend of mine, um, his name is Jesse. So you may know Jesse. Um, but speaking to him, he, we had this conversation and he, he came up with this, this way of thought of like how what unites people is not only what what we have in common. Mm -hmm. That is the hugest, the huge, the hugest. Yo, guys, UCT is going to take my degree. Honestly. <laughs> the, one of the biggest misconceptions is that the only thing that unites us is commonality. Mm. And that's what was in my head, mm. theoretically, when I left. I was like, how do we get, what do we, uh, so if we all eat pop, yes, we're one. Mm. So yes, that, that bodes unity, but differences also keep us together because it stimulates interest and intrigue. So you, so to have a good combination or a healthy combination mm. of things in common and things that are different keeps one excited in the yeah. relationship. Yeah. Mm. You know, we share common values and that is why you may decide you want to be in a romantic relationship with somebody. Yeah. But also you're different from me and I, and I love those differences about you. And I love that you're an extrovert and I'm, I'm an introvert. And that's what intrigues me and keeps the, the fire in the relationship. So likewise, my relationship to people and communities and groups of people, I, I share the same philosophy. Yeah. That when I when I go there, I can be like, oh, me growing up as Motswana, mm. we share, the, we eat the same food. Actually, mm. we've got the same word for like intestines or whatever the case is. Mm. But ah, oh, I really like that you guys run faster than us. <laughs> you know, but or oh, oh, I really like that this is the way. So that that keeps me so excited mm. and fascinated. Mm. And then I can share commonalities. So that sort of relationship creates such a strong bond. Let, okay. You can go on, you can go So on. I think just to just to close it yes. off with, I, you yes. initially asked yes. about this. So it's, um, I, I don't go there necessarily with, with an idea of, um, oh, now I'm Ugandan, mm. or now I'm Tanzanian, or now I'm mm. Kenyan. Yes, I am South African, and I am Botswana, and I am a lot of things. And I con consistently am learning a whole lot of things. But we're also the same because we share a lot of things mm. and you're also different and I appreciate that. Mm. Mm. And I would love to know more. And if you'd love to know more, I'd love to share more. And uh, let's, let's, let's share that. We don't, we don't have to have these labels of you're Ugandan and I'm South African. Yes. Mm. Um, but Vafa, you're touching on something interesting because we come from <clears throat> a, a climate here in SA where those um, delineations are very, you know, clear, very clear. Mm. And so how do you navigate that space? Do you ever get like negativity or from Botswana saying don't claim to be Mutswana or because I know that, you know, we come from a very harsh climate here and SA where like Venda is Venda mm -hmm. and Zulu is Zulu and they are different, you know. So, yes. yeah, how I do you get navigate that, which is, that space? Which yeah. is a very peculiar thing about um, maybe me and my and m my 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 positioning mm. rather so uh w with me first of all i'm 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 like uh, physically ambiguous mm. so you look at me and you're like i'm not sure Le Pakistani, mm. is he an indian from durban is he muslim mm. is he uh colored mm. or you could just be light-skinned mutwana with really good hair jeans mm. you know <laughs> beard is connected <laughs> so you don't know. So that ambiguity in this country, we that. also shy away from, like, if you're very clearly a Venda person or a Tonga person or a Twana person or a Zulu mm. person, then we label you, you and could, we know yeah, how... Yeah, you could be a Shoma Josie, Shoma Josie's brother. You could. Yes. You see? Yeah. Mm. There's that ambiguity about that. So when there's ambiguity in this country, mm. there is... Uh, and it's sad... But there is there is a little bit more leniency, lenience yes. or patience, I love or, this. and that is afforded to you oh. already. Oh, Bafa, you are you know on the money. There's a privilege because yeah. now they don't know, mm. and South Africans when they don't know, they are quiet. They're like, mm, okay, sure, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know. So they, I think that's probably the thing that intimidates South Africans the most because mm. we know it all, mm. especially like when we go around the world or whatever, we feel yeah. like Ritzi, same the same way. But once we don't know something, then we're like, Ish. no, let's, that's, that's where we, we hold back our confidence a bit. Mm. So 
Um, in like physically, I'm I'm a little bit ang- ambiguous, so that that does assist me. And then you know, I th- I, I thought about it, and this is a, a when I when now I do my videos on social media, I can speak Osa, but the but the language and the culture that I'm most comfortable with is Tswana, hands down, mm. because that has informed a lot of my life. Mm. So things that are very close to home, it's all Tswana, mm. you know. Mm. If some yo, if somebody speaks Sitwana, if if a woman comes to me and says, hey, terra, yo, <laughs> You're like, I am me. melting. <laughs> I'm like, oh, line, like take everything, take everything now. <laughs> so so that's the thing that I most relate to. So even in my videos, when I've when when I'm breaking off mm. to small nuances and I'm speaking language, it's mostly Tuan. Mm. And I I always now my perception is that okay. I thought maybe when people are watching this, they're like, oh, it's a Tswana guy, or this is a very socialized Tswana person. And then I got uh, somebody, a friend of mine actually expressed something to me the other day. It's like, she's like, she's not, um, she's not, she's actually, what? No, I think she's colored. I stand correct. Oh, I, I'm not, but she's not Tswana. Mm. And she was like, you know, when we, when I watch your videos, you know, I see a South African. I don't see a Tona guy. Mm. And I was like, yeah, but I p- pick up on these nuances. But she's like, you package it in a way that even though you're predominantly seeing Tona language, I don't feel one bit, Tuana, not, not even one bit. Now, I don't know if it's the combination of my aesthetics and what I'm speaking mm. and saying. Mm-hmm. But when she, she's like, when she, when she watches that, she just sees a, a, a whole South African. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, that now sort of makes sense how I can resonate with the country as a whole. Yeah. Because even Madiba, though, Madiba had you in mind. Yeah. <laughs> First born. <laughs> uh, so, 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 so even though I'm, and which is such a beautiful thing, mm. The, imagine if you could go around the country and just speak to Anna or speak Zulu and and everybody's just like, it's fine, we see you as a South African. Mm. And not like, oh, Kimu Zulu. Mm. Yes. So uh, that is, uh, and, and I'm not quite sure 100% how, what mm. the ingredients are to that. Mm. I find out about these things every day mm. when people talk to me and they're like, oh, share with me a little story about how maybe I've changed perspective or they saw things a different mm. way or I lightened up their day or whatever the case is. Mm. And this is, this is all, it's, it, for me, it's really touching because it like, it's coming across mm. like whatever what I believe, what you want to do. whatever mm. my purpose is, is, is showing. Really coming across, yeah. And uh, it, it also, this is also a message towards like, sometimes really balatata, mm. like, hey, I want to do this purpose. How should I, yeah. how should Ooh. I go about it? Ooh. How should they see? Mm. Should I write it in my manifesto that this is what I'm trying to do? Yes. But a bigger element of it is just, just do, just do. it. Just just like once you yeah. find your voice just and be. you find your person, sure. then it yeah. it will be so clear because then once I, I believe, you know, finding yourself or finding your voice, mm. you become very close to like, you become consistent and coherent mm. as a being. Mm. So now your your intentions mm. are sticking on the outside of your mm. body. So it's very clear. But, uh, you know, and, and what, what, what gets you there is discomfort. Mm. So putting yourself into mm. spaces that end eventually. It As you're talking, I'm realizing that for me, this would ideally be a very liberating conversation to like a young Ursha that's struggling with identity yes. and where they fit in. Like with me being Malawi and South Africa, mm. I struggled. With yeah, it's all Malawi. <laughs> it's all Malawi. Yeah, hey, we <laughs> My mom is Zulu, but I grew up in a Sutu area. Mm. So the issues of identity, so we've talked about it so deeply before mm. in other episodes, have really... So I'm listening to you and I'm like, man, I should have listened to the podcast when I was like eight because I was struggling with identity. And around eight, I remember it was my crown birthday. I lived in Cape Town. And people, you know, expected more of a colored girl. But mm. where am I colored? I'm not colored, you know what I mean? Because it's a whole culture here in SA. Mm. And so I'm listening to you and I, I, I want, like, is, was there a time, younger Vafa, not as wise, not as smart as you are now, who's like, Marana the, 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 who struggled? I, I don't think there was, there was never a doubt that I was not Tuana. Sure. Wow. Personally. Is, right? Wow. Personally personally yeah. but when i needed to vocalize that yo the confidence uh, like it died somewhere here uh, because the first thing that came up is like yo what are they going to say uh, what and what are they going to question uh, 
Mm. And now I've like, so I've lived a lot of my life. Like, yeah, but like, what are you really? Like, you know, <laughs> like deep, where, where are your parents? And I'm like, so, so now it's through maybe a lot of conversations, a lot of self-development, uh, like a lot of understanding Eve. that I've now challenged people on that. When mm. somebody says, oh, where are your parents from? So I was like, okay, so my parents determine my culture. Mm. Is that what? Yeah. So it actually doesn't matter mm. where you're grown up, what you learned, and what you saw. Yeah, absolutely right. Because I am Kosa, but I don't speak Kosa. <coughs> I don't relate to Kosa because I grew up to in the Val. I speak Sesotho, and mm. I feel like I'm a Sesotho. Mm. But it's easier for me for people to substantiate because I share the same yes. hair texture, yeah. I share the same skin tone, yeah. everything yeah. with black people. Yes. Like it's just I uh, know yes. Kimsoto. Mm. With you though, you have to back it up. Uh. Yes, yeah, so I think you could you could struggle bits of what I struggled in in a sense of for me it was it was like a very overt objection to whatever I needed uh. to say or whatever I mm. believed. Yeah. So it was a fight. Yeah. So what what I could probably empathize and understand that you could possibly encounter and I don't know if you have or not, but people will be like, Esh you're a fake Kosa. Mm. Or you're not, you, you have lost your culture. Yes. And now, so Basutu people in the Val wouldn't say. completely accept you because you're not Umu Tosa. Mm. And then when you go to the Tosa people, they're like, Esh, but you, you're a diluted mm. version from Joburg. Mm. We're not sure about. So now you stand in the in between, you're like, nobody's calling me home, mm. you know? Um, sure. But but I, I, I don't think it's that severe. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying because I'm much more closer in terms of look looks. wise. Mm-hmm. I don't have to validate more like you would have to. Yes. To make it ha- make sense to other people. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I would never have to justify why I am Sutu. Mm-hmm. how when you get to a place and say I'm Zwana, for people it's a shocker. So the justifying you have to do, I don't mm-hmm. necessarily ever have to do. But, I, I, so that but I'll, I'll, I'll add a caveat to that. That mm-hmm. actually, Zwana people have no objection. Mm. So the people I actually care about most mm. about having me with them, mm. they're like, it's fine. Yes, You're so one of us. I think gen- even I, I spent I think three or four years, four years in um, in the Eastern Cape. Mm. So that's where I learned to speak a little bit of Tosa, and I I've got a couple of really really close friends from the Eastern Cape. So I would spend a lot of time with their families, and they were so welcoming. They even said, oh. Mm. Tim Kulu, Zindlebe, Zindlebe, Zombini. They would give me mm. clan names. Mm. They're like, you're a Tosa person. Mm. from the, So they were very welcoming and happy to mm. have me as do a you, Tosa. So, do you think that's a language thing? Because language is disarming. You know, like I've seen if I, there's a group of Malawians and I say, oh, Achimwene Waswela, their mood changes, you know. All of a sudden, they're more kind and more accepting of me. Do you think it's your ability to... to Move between the language languages. does does because language already it already tells the other person that I have put that that You're person interested. has put themselves in an uncomfortable position. Mm-hmm. So if anything, they're kneeling. They'll be like, mm-hmm. "I come in peace," you know, mm-hmm. or I have put myself in an Absolutely. inconvenience to arrive here. I so hate. this is what I'm I'm giving to you as a gift. Uh-huh. Now the other person naturally, if you give somebody kindness, they're giving you something kindness yeah. in there. So initially, sure. yes. Okay. Because they hear that they're like, okay, this person is willing to, to accommodate. Mm. You know? Mm. Whereas um, if you come and you're very, you're very uh, arrogant about your way of life, then that is already like we're starting a war. Like mm. you're, not, you're not coming here with any sort of um, compromise yes, or yes. seeking agreement or alignment mm. with anything so yes language does help but of course like to build a stronger relationship it needs to go a little bit deeper so yeah, then the they'll be like okay how much of the language do you know yeah. now okay how much okay yeah. oh you want to learn fine you, you know we can still mm. continue sure I, i've really i've enjoyed this and I, I, i'm even thinking of how in essence though you're saying that people have been welcoming which is something that isn't a picture that or a narrative that's painted of south africans mm. you know and i liked that that over and above it's always people who have no business Complete, mm. like, our northern... Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Again, politically, this is the capital of conversations. Aye, aye, aye. Eh? <laughs> so, so, I think, or let's say, the, the Western world will have more mm. questions about, like, mm. oh, you, you... I've been told, no, you can't be African. You're mm. not. I'm like, 
No, now you're telling me. Like, you mm. you haven't even heard anything about my story, mm. but they're like, no. And are you saying that's been specifically from people? No, I was, I was in, I, I studied like for, I did an exchange program, part of my master's in Europe. You are. You have that clapping sound in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I spent, I spent mm. about nine, ten months in Europe. I did sure. some comedy and then I, mm. I I studied, and now when I was when I was telling people I was like I was, I'm South African and they had objected they're like no, they you, they you I, see? Now, as you know mm. you see this says segregation mentality is not African. Imagine they asked me where are you from South Africa, they're like no, I'm like, heaven. <laughs> so okay, you since know you where know, I live. tell me. Mm. So then then I'd be like yes my my. You know, then I mm. explain the thing and then say my, my, my parents are from Iran. Then yes, that's where you're from. And I'm like, <laughs> I've never even been there. Sure. I don't even know what's going on there. Mm. I'm not that. But sure. So it's a uh, mm. yes. No. I, yeah, I got to who push our agenda, but Africans are very welcoming. That's, <laughs> that's all I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. But we've run out of time. I get I mean, Vafa, I would love to have you again. Oh, of course. That's what they all say. I would love to. Yeah. Oh, wow. I would love to have you again uh, because I don't think we, we've only scratched the surface of mm. the different conversations we can have. I know that you're very passionate about a, a very pan-African movement and agenda, mm. and I know you're passionate about identity. We've touched on it, but I think we definitely can go deeper. So will you come back? I, I will provide availability. Is it? Yeah. And it will Kape, I'm easy. international. And I keep like slim, Yes. No, no. I, of every guest we've had here, He's the one person that I've really deep. He can't get. Most. He can't get. He can't get. Can't get. Can't get. Can't get. <laughs> but thank you so much for taking your time. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank for you, me. thank you, thank I you. Really and we fun. really do hope to have you again when you do have time. And we wish you all we want to see that next year mm. international. It's baby. gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was today's episode of the Conversation Capital. For now though, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye and God bless.